So, uh, you skipped work today. I <laughs> so, I, did, I was sick as shit last night, so I decided to stay up all night abusing substances and coding. And it's like two That's days it. after chapter 24. So, already have made astounding progress. <laughs> Disclaimer, before I show you anything, my Mac is running like a piece of shit right now. It's not my software. That's probably fucking over Not eating. just my software. Okay, so, here we have the, uh... The infamous shrine of me. Yes. I decided that this will be my new test bed. So the first thing I did is I wanted to fix up uh, some of the lighting and the shadows. They they weren't really like the way I wanted them to be. They kind of pissed me off and made me feel bad about myself. So check out the new and improved shadows. First of all, you'll notice that the map itself is now set up in full 3D, so that yes. like. Uh, so the it's angles the that, are, yeah. that are pointing away from the light, they're darker. Yeah. You can see that. And the shadows now are absolutely astounding. They're perfect. And when I'm standing behind the entities, I'm not lighting up their face anymore. Um, I had a whole bunch of math I had to do to fix all this crap up. The thing is that with ES, we're going with a, a kind of weird perspective to where the, uh, the ground is facing up while the entities themselves are facing are scaled along the y and the z-axis they're sheared technically so we can go to the old 3d camera here and here's my shrine in 3d and we can enable the alt r these are the primitives that i'm using to generate the shadow volumes so yes. you can see see actually like now it's on the wall and it's actually uh perpendicular so these shadow volumes let me see. Oh, God damn it. Shadow volumes. Shadow volumes. So another thing I did is we've been working on, uh, we've been trying to settle on a way to dynamically swap between 2D and 3D. Our artists hate it, but we fucking love it. And Fancy. other people love it. So we're not going full 3D and we're not going full 2D. We're just kind of at a, at a standstill, I guess you could say. So what we've done is, let me add some trendy ass lights going on here so you can see what that's happening so now I've made it to where the camera is dynamic in the sense that you can at runtime modify the obliquity of the camera yeah. which is basically moving it along the x-axis and if your level is set up pristinely as mine is it will look fully yeah, we've got to redo oh. all of our uh, see that building. Oh, see okay. as I move down that axis like I'm still in full 3d yes so when your levels are correct, you can do that. And this is completely seamless. We can use that as transitions like when you go indoors or when you talk yeah. to people and shit. Or uh, like certain areas like enter like a little flyover or all kinds of right, stuff. Right, exactly, like, exactly. Do it's going to be fucking awesome. speculative. All right, so that's not even the main thing. Like that's cool and all, but who gives a shit? It's just what I spent an entire goddamn day working on. So <laughs> what I'm very pleased with is people seem to... Oh, God, it's probably my job. People seem to like the... The particulars in the last video so yes. I've revamped them with the new uh, focus on pseudo 3d scenes yes. um, they just weren't cutting it anymore because they're 2d as shit so now I've moved the rigid body physics of the particles into full 3d space and I added some more like little pizzazz shit going on that's really fucking cool so now we have this particle emitter and you can see that it's showering down focus. full 3d on Julian it's surrounding his ass. And they're staying on the ground. Yeah, and now they accumulate on the ground. And it looks awesome. And they're specularly lit. Which yeah, looks... Some of them are slightly different shades? What is that? Uh, yeah, some of them. So basically I'm faking them. They're not actually uh, they're not actually 3D, obviously. They're, yeah. they're rectangles. And what I'm doing is I'm rendering rectangles with, with a normal face in the camera and a normal facing up. So it actually looks like cubes at different orientations. But in reality, so I'm just getting... It looks like they're all 3D. It. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just doing it with uh, rectangles, and it looks really fucking good. So, all right, now yeah. let's actually flex the engine and start doing some cool stuff. So, okay, so let me disable. Uh, let me disable solidity. Uh, you know, we got time for that. Disable collision, so I can just jump up elevation. So I'm, I'm raising elevation, so you can see. Yeah. On the z-axis, I've changed to prove that this is actually a three-dimensional demo. Yes. So now let me shit out some particles. And using the same force applicators that I was doing last time in full 3D space, see what the fuck we can do, Watson. Boom. Jesus. So I'm, I'm sucking it in with an implosion force, 
and fold 3D space and it's orbiting my ass. 3D space and then boom, I can shit it out. And it also goes back to the ground and accumulates where I left it. So the accumulation there is going to be fucking yeah. awesome for like, sorry, I have to reset the end. Oh, yeah, that was a hiding. It's gonna be down. cool for uh, like blood and shit. Like when you start hitting people, blood will splatter. Yeah, and it'll stay. And it'll it'll stay around for a while. Like I have so much memory I've allocated, and then when I need to recycle it, it'll fade out, and I'll be able to reuse those particles. Yeah, it'll but take it the look, lifetime and everything. It will look seamless, but Jeez, okay. yeah, you see how it's it's trailing. Like yeah, when I you're kind of dragging when I suck out, it in, yeah, I'm force. dragging it around. But yeah, man, full 3D Jesus. everything. It takes more days off work. Now imagine if we did this like every single day of our lives. I think I'm literally dying, but I don't really give a fuck. I had a good run. Jesus. I know I look like shit too. Oh, no, it's... Well... What do you have to say for yourself? I have to show you what I've been working on all goddamn week. So, basically, gameplay. We were talking to some members of the team. I, mean, I don't know if you guys know, but I did some pretty cool stuff. Binding the cameras. Now you can't really tell because it's a really ugly level. But of course they don't. Uh, the dynamic camera is back, so I can modify the relative level of obliquity. Actually, I think I showed that last one. But anyway, all right, so now as you can see, Julian can dash. Kicking up some dirt. Kind of like uh, Mega Man X and Kirby Superstar, and it totally lagged. You you double tap, and yeah. like he can dash. Yeah. It's like we're trying to add uh, elements of games to that are more action oriented to make our combat a lot more interesting than just like Secret of Mana running up and hitting shit. Yeah. So one of my influences has been Mega Man X. Cause it's oh, awesome. absolutely. So really, really liked uh, the idea of being able to jump. <gasps> We don't currently have an animation, but I have actually I added jumps. Like in 3D space, see this? this is a solid object. Toggle solid? You can now jump over it. There's this. You can go around it, jump over the little section. Did you and I also added it. Yeah, I added it to where it's like, it's like Mario RPG now. Oh, that's not a good example. See this barrel right here? Boom. Standing on it. Falling off of it. Oops. Yeah. So now, like, you'll be able to, like, run and dash and jump, and it'll add a lot of, like, action-y, uh... Gameplay elements. Gameplay elements to an otherwise kind of boring genre. Ooh, yeah. So another thing... Check it out. This is, like, just some test crap that I added to this area. So we have these, uh... Oh, God, too oblique. This crap is above Julian. I'm just showing that, like, it's a platform. Yeah. It's, like, platforming elements. Crap. So it's like a bridge to up here, and then boom. And my collision's a little off, but I gotta fix it. That is pretty awesome. Though. Yeah. So we could See, have. I like, fell through a hole. Yeah. yeah. So we could have like uh, I don't know, um, minecart tracks and like the caves and stuff that maybe you exactly, gotta like track yeah. along those. And yeah. There'll be some like platforms. And now, yeah, now now you can explore in 3D space, and there, it'll add like a lot a lot to the exploration because so, you can like climb on roofs and like jump on crates and stuff. What like you mean that. to tell me is we've. Dude, you have no idea how hard it was to fake all this 3D math. So like now, now the uh, rigid body integration for the uh, physics engine, and everything is in three dimensions. There's actually a, a gravity force applied to everything. Yeah. It's so like these rigid bodies, for example, and all characters now have gravity, and jumping is a force against gravity. So. But you created we're next faking, gen. We're faking 3D collision checks. It's kind of cool. Next gen 2D RPG at me. Alright, so apparently we're having technical difficulties over here scripting NPCs. Yes. Uh, well, this is new for us. We're, we haven't really done much NPC work. These stalls that are uh, greater than just uh, two or three tiles, I wanted beautiful, the NPCs beautiful. to be able to kind of walk around behind them to give it a little bit of feel of life. Yeah, you don't want them just sitting there looking like um, they're retarded. I wanted their timing to be different where it's not all like... Eh, eh. Um, <laughs> like so in Pokemon? I, I attach the behavior to everything and... Uh, Change the times to where they are a little bit different. All right, let's but I see, forgot let's to see, change see. the uh, meandering area, so this happened. Jeez! All of the other ones. They're gonna beat your ass, man. Or well, meandering to hang out with this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well. Jeez! Well. 
It's business. So, so business is doing well in that stall, yeah, or it's they, not doing well because well, they're all they, trying to sell stuff. They've abandoned their other businesses to join this man. <laughs> Jesus. All right, guys. So it's been a few days. I've been working on the Lauren Ruins tile sheet. Made a lot of progress. Let me show you. Now, this is just a demonstration, of course. This is the more natural cave part with a waterfall, cracks and all of this. Then there's the man-made ruins. I think I've got the gist of the architecture. But uh, there's a problem with the um, caves. You can see here that the walls blend in basically with the uh, with the background, with the floor. Now the walls were already made by Patrick. I made everything else on this image. Um, actually Patrick, you can see here below, has made a lot of tiles uh, which I took as a guideline of what to do with the with the ruins. All right, we've been making some pretty awesome progress with uh, bringing Lauren to life, uh, adding some interactivity and some uh, NPCs and a little bit of AI. Do any of these have conversations yet? Oh, uh, that guy does. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, also, you hear the sound effects for that? I don't know if you noticed. Hear that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he did that. So I'm, I'm trying to script this up, the fountain to have a uh, 3D positional audio, so like the closer you are to the fountain, the more it's like bubbling and stuff, so like, you hear it huh. gurgling? Of course that's not working right now. Oh, well. Although I have scripted up the, uh, check this out. Well. Did you hear that? Yeah, that was pretty awesome, yeah. dude. Let me do it again. Ignore that, it's raised to the water. Yeah, we're about to fix that. Oh, over here. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so like this, that's a uh, it's a generic little behavior that you can attach to a warp that's on a door, and basically yeah. you tell it, you can tell it which tiles uh, comprise the door, mm -hmm. and then it can dynamically be like, oh, okay, like you open the door, so swap these out, swap these tiles out for like open tiles and shit, and then swap them back. Basically, yeah, you just like tell the indices on the, yeah. the tile sheet. Yeah, and it like gets rid gets rid of it or whatever. Mm. Yeah, so. Oh, dude, you should totally uh, get the uh, the wall for the inside of the houses and add it to the uh, Lauren exterior sheet, too. Because, like, when you see the floor and then it showed the black behind it, you can put, like, just the beginning of the wall. It would give a little bit more depth. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. <gasps> oh, yeah. So I've been working on the floating islands. I'm basically finished. And here's a demo. I've made the grass tiles fit perfectly on top of the um, rock tiles so that they can blend seamlessly for example here and here here and also create different sorts of patterns looks pretty cool sound effects Jeez. <laughs> are you sick of hearing these noises yet? a little so, bit Essentially what has happened is we have found out that our audio composer actually is capable of producing sound effects. For the first time. For the first time ever we actually have like sound effects from a sound composer composed specifically for yes. It's not not stuff I just here. ripped from Genesis games? Or Ocarina of Time or anything like that. <laughs> Alright, so uh, what I've done here is I've given every tile uh, in the in it area in it dot, or level in it dot Lua, I've given every tile um, two new properties, one for the uh, sound effect for when you walk on the tile, mm -hmm. and then one for when you smack the tile. So like you could hit like grass with a sword and it sounds like grass, so you're like walk on metal and it's like ding ding ding, or whatever. So basically what I'm uh, demonstrating here is, listen to the footsteps. So that's Julian walking on ground, right? Yeah. And actually what I did is I made it so if you're running, it like ups the pitch. Oh, that's awesome. It actually sounds really cool. 
All right, so here's some grass here. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. So now what I've done is I was douching my ass. So I flooded Lauren. <laughs> What's that water? Jeez. And it actually, it works. Okay, well, the water's recent with elevation, but. It's a swimming pool. Yeah. And it, it honors jumping, too. Obviously, you ain't gonna be making footsteps and jumping. Oh, by the way, you're not supposed to be able to do this. Jesus! <laughs> I just realized you could do that. Yes, the platform. Yeah, we're gonna have to put secrets on these roofs and stuff. I think you can actually make it to the roof. Mm. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, and like for debug mode, look. <laughs> <laughs> you can do like 50 million jumps. Oh my god. So yeah. Remind me Jeez. to take that out before we ship the game. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah. Right, so, apparently, we had some children. Jesus. They live under my lawnmower now. <laughs> apparently, I'm their mommy. Did you, uh, actually try and use your lawnmower, or how did you discover them? I was out here actually taking a piss, and I hear, meow. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? God. They all pop out, and they're all like, trying to be my friend and stuff. So. This one is, the rest of them are cowering inside the belt. Actually, they were all being pretty friendly earlier. This one is clearly the brave one. Yeah, that one's the brave one. It's because I gave them all milk, now they're all like, think I'm their mommy. Uh, we would have given them cat food too, but apparently... I forgot that. Oh no, we didn't forget. This is what happens you when they mow your lawn in Alabama. You gain feral cats. <laughs> yes. Hey everybody, it's Connor Lenning, the soundtrack composer for Elysian Shadows. I am back. Um, I was kind of absent for a little while from the project because of school, but I have caught up and I'm back, so I'm going to show you guys how I made some of the new stuff and what I'm doing. Um, I had a little checklist. So I did forest music, museum music, church music. Uh, I had a big sound effects list from Falco and Tyler. And I've been uh, working through it and getting what I need. And uh, so the biggest thing is I switched from FL Studio to Sonar X2 Producer Edition thing, Mabar. FL Studio is more based for like synthesizers and MIDI and stuff and I wanted to uh, start recording more of my acoustic and drums and uh, vocal stuff and it sucks doing that in FL Studio a lot. So I switched to Cubase and I really liked it initially and thought I was going to use it. Then it turns out Cubase is super buggy and I couldn't load projects, it would freeze and I had all kinds of problems with it. So then I switched back to Sonar, and when I originally started making music, like, uh, 12 years ago, maybe, uh, when I was a little babby, I used Sonar for Producer's Edition, and I think I used it on a whim because Craig Jones uses it or something, and I really liked it, and uh, so I've got the new version of Sonar, and I love it. It is by far the best. I have like software for music I've ever used. It's awesome. Uh, so we'll start with the church theme here. It's just choir and a harp. So it's pretty basic, but we wanted the the Lauren Church first church to be kind of basic and and uh, I don't know godly sounding or whatever. So it sounds like this. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, the best part about it, the thing that made it all tie together, oops, uh, is uh, I opened up Nexus, and there's this thing, there's a preset called Singing Diva that I'd never used before, and I just tried it, and, uh, it sounds really good. And then I pretty much just made the full track. Uh, 
It's pretty simple, there's not much to explain about this one, but the thing was is that we wanted to make it sound uh, godly, I guess. So it has uh, one choir, the green one here is just a choir, the blue one is a singing diva, uh, and then the other one's just a harp, and the harp sounds really good. And then just a bit of reverb, and then loop it, and we have the choir theme. So, 7 a.m. No, I was getting ready to say that. Oh, you can say it again. So 7 a.m. I'm frolicking about the sunny fucking morning, sunshiny town of Lauren, and oh. uh, I'm actually trying to work on some storyline stuff and some other areas, scripting them up. So like Tyler's NPCs are all around, and like you can talk to him and shit. Well, looky there, that sack of shit got his scripts working after. All. Okay, first of all. He did get his scripts working. A lot of them do have actual story-related stuff. Those don't. But, uh... So one of the things we wanted to work on is, uh... Using different camera perspectives, like, throughout the game. Yep. Like, we have the oblique, we have the, uh... Some, some areas look great with oblique, some areas look great standard, some areas look good with the, uh, perspective. Like, we have a lot of different 3D cameras that we can use. So, uh... Yeah, certain certain areas you can script to use different types of uh, cameras, which is exactly what I just said. I'm sorry, I'm tired of shit. Oh. So anyway, what I've been working on is this here church. So I actually finished the church. This is the church. So this, first of all, this beautiful track is uh, Connor's new track for the church. Um, this is... Uh, a perspective projection and this this actually looks good it, it looks better for uh, fixed cameras yeah. fixed position all cameras the, the normal maps there. and stuff need to be fixed in here still but that's for artists it's good, but, so I, I actually can talk to some people well 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 if it isn't Kendrick's little errand boy I dare say you have enough sins to confess for all of us Jesus. Finally ready to redeem yourself in the eyes of our benevolent creator. It's about time you grew up and quit frolicking around in those ruins. So basically, you, uh, you're you not known for being one to attend this <laughs> church. Julian's not. He brings you by. And uh, you're friends with the... Uh... The priest was a, an old friend of your parents. I don't want to go into too much detail, but he's kind of taken you under his wing. And been a friend of yours, even though you haven't really shared his faith. So. Yeah. He'd like to believe that you're here to pay your respects, but he knows you better than that. Jeez. So what is it he can help you with? Yeah. And just adding more options now. But yeah, that's it. Is that, uh, is that priest a female angel? Yes, <laughs> for now, because we don't have actual graphics for the priest, but... Yeah. I'm trying to... I need to get Patrick or somebody to finish the freaking... Uh normal maps and stuff so we can right. start popping out these statues and not make it look like a freaking checkerboard. Yeah. The uh, the shadows work really well in here. Actually what I have is I got rid of all of the uh, ambience and I have just, it's basically a dark ass room with one point light suspended way up in the air to make it look really kind of peaceful and ambient -y. You can see where the point light is based on where my shadow is underneath it. Yeah. And, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Alright. You not, got not quite finished, but uh, all right. What you got here is a swab. You can hit F to swing it. All right. You should probably press C to go ahead and spawn a mini. F to swing it. Push C to spawn him. Yep. You better be careful. We're gonna let him touch your ass. It ain't too friendly. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Oh, you're still playing. Keep going. I just exploded. Yeah. What do I... What? Oh, well... Knocked you off the screen. I exploded apparently. into Jules. Well, no, I... Apparently it blew Julian directly off the screen. Oh. Well, let's try again. So the next track from me is uh, the forest theme. Uh, when you're ex exploring outside of Lauren and stuff. Uh, it originally just started... Uh, I wrote it on acoustic guitar while I was at university and I wrote it down and then I ended up putting it into here and uh, 
the most important part is the flute. I, can't, I think this is the flute. It's like the Golden Sun flute. It was also in the uh, ES main theme that was in uh, one of the older AIGD uh, chapters. I think it was 24, 23. I can't remember. But it's the same flute. Uh, you know, can't go wrong with a, a Golden Sun sounding flute because Golden Sun is the best. And uh, so it's got that, it's got some strings. And I can't remember what this is. Oh, so there's bongos right here. I think there's another bongos. This one. So that's the percussion. And I also have piano, which is here. Oops, I didn't open the piano. Hold on a sec. Gotta let it load. Um, yeah, here we go. And uh, I don't know what this is. Though this is all the uh, kind of chip y bits that are added to it. So. Um, this is the YM2612 and it's kind of like the Sega Genesis uh, uh, patch thing. Uh, it has some of the exact same patches that are in some of the Sonic games which is awesome and I've been putting them in. So this part sounds like this. So I know it sounds like it's out of tune there, you can hear it but it's on purpose, actually. And uh, all of it together sounds like this. So just trying to make a, a bit of a golden sun uh, a little bit of Chrono Trigger, just kind of, you know, make like a light-hearted forest theme that sounds peaceful and uh, fits the art that uh, Patrick and the other two guys are doing, which is awesome. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Let me think here. No, that's about it. So that's pretty much all from me so far. Uh, I did a bunch of sound effects, but that's not really uh, as interesting to show off. And uh, I'm going to be working on a couple other things, which is exciting for the game that I probably can't talk about. But uh, yeah, I mean the game's coming together together really well. We're actually starting to see it a lot of gameplay, and uh, it really feels cohesive. It just doesn't just feel like an engine anymore. It's really starting to look like a game, and it's it's really exciting. And we're all really uh, happy with where it's going. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So, just want to save the record. It's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday. What's today? I have to be at work shortly. It's a work day, <laughs> is what we're saying. We decided to drink a bunch of caffeine and stay up all night devving on a work night because we're retarded. Well, we're really, really excited about this. And we want to conquer the world. So, you saw us working on Lauren. Like, I'm kind of excited. So now, I've transitioned from Lauren into there's a bunch of stuff you've never seen before. Like, listen to the uh, music. Spoilers. To the forest. This is Connor's new Forest track. It's actually amazing. So I added a bunch of stuff, like sound effects wise. Added, there's still a lot of collision issues. I'm trying to make these. An elevation? Oh, the elevation's wrong there. Oh, there, yeah. I'm trying to make this, where it's like tall grass that like damps you. Kind of like Pokemon. The physics engine will be damped, like when you throw shit in there and when you walk, it's going to make you walk slower and stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah. One of the other big things I'm working on is I'm working on like a generic script that, that for like environmental interaction, right? So like, mm -hmm. I got a bunch of uh, things I can show you for that. So, this door. Damn, it's locked. You ain't getting in there. Yeah. So we'll walk over here. We're just enjoying a stroll through the forest. Oh, why looky there, a mushroom. You got a poisonous mushroom. Jesus. Alright, let's keep looking through the forest. There's a chest over there, but I want to save it to the end. God damn it. 
I made these things cast shadows on accident. They're not supposed to cast yeah, shadows. Yeah, I noticed that. All right, so there's this thing that Patrick made that's like way too small, a hole in the tree. Yeah. But we want like to be able to hide crap like in all kinds of places and stuff. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, of course, you can examine the hole in the tree. And you found 50 hedra in the tree. Oh, and you examine the tree again, it's like there's nothing in the goddamn tree. Because you got it all. So, continue on with our stroll. Walk over here. The chest that has incorrect shadows. Oh shit, man. You found an E-tank. We <laughs> ran out of graphics. Jesus. Oh Get no, I've been e using that for placeholder uh, spell icons. And you already cleaned the bitch out. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it right now. The uh, collision screwed up, elevation screwed up. I'm just working on mechanics right now, like this. I want to make it where you can chop this. Yeah, so yeah, cut it down like some Legend of Zelda stuff. Absolutely. You're uh, you're pretty lucky. You're not in my version of the forest right now. Really? Mine's not nearly as interactive, but it may be full of enemies that I've been fighting for the last few hours, affecting their uh, state machines and reactions. I so it's me, Falco. It's almost time for bed the next day. Tyler had to go to work, that poor bastard. <laughs> I stayed home. But, I think I'm delirious officially. I tried to add some stuff, script up some uh, rigid body stuff, and look what happened. First of all, I'm like, there's like an invisible collider up here, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, why can't I walk up here? I have no idea what's going on. I just tried to add an entity. Then I zoom out. What? the hell is that? Don't know if I can explain what that is. It looks kind of cool though. Children, this is why you get your beauty sleep. So next from me is the uh, Lauren Museum theme and uh, I went through a couple different versions of it and some people liked it, some people didn't like it, or it's you know it was too dark, it was too evil, it was too uh, whatever, and so what I decided to do is I tried to make it sound kind of Hogwartsy. <laughs> so I got a piano. It's the it's called the Grand. It's my favorite piano patch. Um, I just played a little thing, which sounds I'll I'll put it on solo and so you can hear it. it sounds like this. So I've been playing a lot of uh, the Harry Potter Game Boy Color games because they're awesome and I tried to kind of make it sound a little bit like that and then what I did is I added some uh, synthesizers and kind of chip tune a little bit of like an old school uh, influence which is these parts here. And put it all together and it sounds like this. So the most important thing was that the piano just sounded not necessarily classical, but it, it sounded smart, I guess, and uh, it had to sound kind of mysterious, but not, it was too, like, the original demos were way too evil. Everybody said that they were way too evil or dark or whatever. Uh, so and then and just adding little bits on top. Uh, so this one, again, is pretty simple. Uh, you look tired. I am tired. I do have a few things to show off, however. Step forward. Uh, First of all, you can see Radita. <laughs> yes. Lurking in the right, forest. your little fucking slimes. Okay, so something that we always fucking wanted. On, he's not gonna kill me, right? No. Something we always fucking wanted was like uh, environmental interactivity, like Zelda, where like you can walk up and like beat the shit out of the grass. Yeah. But we're taking it one step further to where like there's piles of leaves you can like walk through and like the leaves disperse and mm -hmm. like you can beat the grass and all that. Oh, yeah. So like literally created like this behavior where where we're giving uh, all of the, the tall grass in the game colliders so that when you you enemies rigid bodies fireballs anything hits into them with the particle engine we're generating grass particles dynamically look at this see that it, it looks oh, pretty no, damn good focus on it see it nope uh, yes 
Okay. And like the faster you run into it, the more it disperses. See? Yes. You've right. aggroed all of I them. I know, you're, they're fucking pissed off at me. Okay. See that? See that? See it? See it? Yes, I actually got that. Yeah, so. It's gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna have all kinds of like environmental interactivity. And if one of these assholes walks into it, we'll do that too. So, like. Fucking get <laughs> through his ass. All right. So what I'm working on now is uh, for the combat system is uh, environmental interactivity. Yes. And in the sense of like we want to be able to use the the physics engine to like we have the physics engine. You know, there's like a barrel I can push around. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, I, oh my God! I can push it around and stuff. And like now I can pick it up. We need better animations for it, but I can pick it up and I can throw it. Yes. Which is cool and all, and you'll be able to like fucking get the fuck out of my way, throw it at these assholes, and it'll do damage eventually. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> See, they're they're also rigid bodies. You'll be able to like beat the shit out of them with the barrels. But like, something I wanted to do and wanted to work on was to make objects shatterable. Like like we're building like an entireable entire shatterable engine to where you can pick these up, throw them, they'll they'll shatter. And then those fragments of the rigid body themselves are recursively creating rigid bodies that are then fed Jesus. back into the physics engine. This is not cheap at all. Like, I'm, oh, I'm having on. to, like, do a lot of shortcuts. Get the fuck out of my Oh, yeah, their, their AI is a little down. recent yeah. in your version, but it's fine. Right. So, so uh, based on your, uh, your strength and stuff, you're able to pick these up. And based on, you can give, oh, God, you can give every uh, barrel... Oh my god, they're taking over the barrels. You can give every barrel a, a different uh, oh, durability factor. So these aren't very durable. They explode easily. And the less durable it is, see, they explode when you run into them. And then these are rigid bodies with uh, rotation and stuff. They're then fed back into the particle engine. So let me real quick demonstrate some of the uh, 3D-ness going on here. Oh god. The, the level's totally, like, fucked in 3D. We gotta fix that. But you can see Julian. You can see this house somewhat. Get out of my way. <laughs> it's like, I mean, let me throw the barrel against the wall, and boom, in 3D. Yeah, it did go up like a it, tile. Yeah, it goes up a tile, and it's, it's fed back. So when you throw these, it actually... Well, let me show you here. Probably looks better with the oblique camera than... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so watch when I throw. You're actually giving it... You're giving it Z Yeah, you can see where it's going too, up. So... And then you'll be able to uh, beat the shit out of these guys. But you can see these particles themselves like can also break the grass. Yes. So anything can interact with the grass or the environment or they make it where you can pick these little assholes up and like kick the shit out of them. Be careful, you pick them up, they'll start like chomping on you. But, They're yeah. kinda of docile they've been that's, that's what we're working in this right now. Alright, so in order to appease my own narcissism and satisfy my desire to make sure shit is quite efficient, what I have done here is I have built a stress test of sorts. Let me disable all this guy down. Uh, there's debuggetry. There are 410 rigid bodies on screen. And there's a bunch of grasses with particles. You've got your little douche quads walking around and stuff. So, without further ado, Leroy! They're all highly breakable, so I'm just like fucking breaking the shit out of them. And there's a bunch of grass particles too, of course. Oh, yeah. What a dick. So, yeah, shit uh, didn't think, even drop in frame. <laughs> I think we're good. I dare say shit's efficient. Unless it's on the Dreamcast or iOS. Uh, yeah, that'll take some serious work. <laughs> It's actually, it would probably be more more on the, well, eh, no, it would be rough on the Dreamcast. Leander here is working on Secret of Mana style uh, tall grass that looks really fucking good that we'll be able to chop down like Secret of Mana and Zelda. Tyler here, hold on, hold on, hold on, is working on the new combat system, alright. He's got dude coming at him, very nice, very nice, boom. Fucking epic ass blood splatter. You're doing a bit 15 damage a bit. Oh, is he slightly trans translucent? Yeah. Like, oh, he's got like his red damage shit going on. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Nice feedback. Yeah. He's a rigid body, right? Yeah, rigid body's fine. That's why you're blowing him back a bit. It's like he's actually yeah, applying to, force uh, with his shots. Kill yeah. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus Christ.
Oh, you I fucking explodes. The <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I don't even know. The barrel wanted to Can you honest. smack the barrel? Yeah. Oh, cool. That's oh, kind of cool. I got some heater up here. Oh. Jesus! <laughs> what the <Wait>. fuck? <laughs> Jesus! It's the same vacuum for all the Hedra. Apparently it applies the same force. That's basically. the battle engine. <laughs> so we're working, we're trying to perfect the explosion with like the, the money drops. Whether Hedras, that's our, uh, that's our unit of currency in ES, Hedra. Yeah. So like we're trying to perfect how he explodes with them. We're trying to give it some Z, uh, yeah, ignore how we're trying to we're trying to make it go up. Yeah, ignore how fucked up the level looks in like oblique view. It's just rough. Jeez, it's going up. So you gave it like upward velocity or force. Yeah, I, when I when I spun all of them, I set them. They're not affected by gravity, right? Slightly higher Z's because I was trying to get them to kind of explode like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're not being affected by gravity. So they're just like. <laughs> Jeez. All right, six oh two. We're still alive. No heart attack. We are uh, balls deep in the combat system, so we are working on uh, integrating rigid body physics with the combat itself. So we have these barrels, which you can throw and shit, and we have these audacious motherfuckers whose asses you can beat. Now, boom! You can actually use the physics and beat the shit out of them by throwing... Oh my, okay. Jesus. Jesus. It's a bit much. Go find another one beat his ass. And the barrels will shatter and deal damage to him. See? Smacked him in the face. And the damage was proportional to how hard it hit him, which is proportional to how strong you are. And, uh, what, how heavy the barrel is, too, and stuff? Like yeah, that. yes. Exactly. Oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I need to work on the explosions. Oh, I, I like a lot of... You know, I can do this. So, like, dude, like, you can do the vacuum thing, too. Oop. Yes. And like suck them all up and like shoot them at the motherfuckers. Like all all the uh, the little colored ones Jesus. are uh, money that was getting picked up when you collide with it. It disappears. But like all the shards of the barrels were flying around me, and I just like walked into a bunch of the like slimes. Like, <laughs> <"Pfft, it's awesome." laughs> so yeah, all of the spells we were showing off were like uh, we were like shooting things and like absorbing them, the rigid bodies with uh, force generators and shit. Now those those can uh, affect and hurt like enemies. Like we could suck shit up and then. Pfft, Shoot him at him. That's so, really, really cool. well, we got these audacious little sacks here. I uh, was throwing barrels at them earlier, but I decided I wanted to see. Uh, <laughs> pick them up <laughs> and throw them at uh, the friends over here. Jesus. Oh, well. But yes, you can pick up small enemies and bash the shit out of them, throw them at each other. It's so, like if he were spiky or something. He'd Yes, and we need to define damage types and stuff like that too, but apparently doing that, uh, stop it before it hits a move object and just shut itself. <laughs> Alright, well shit. Yeah. So we got so excited before we forgot to like implement something like completely fucking fundamental <laughs> with the, the battle engine. It's the dynamic audio system. So right now, check it out. Check out the music. Check out the fact that... Well, let, let them hear that there, it's different because there, there's no... Uh, Specifically, there's no drums going on right now. And then the uh, the uh, audio engine will dynamically uh, change the track to fade into another track here when something aggro's. Hear the drums? It picks up. And then there will be another level of intensity for something like a boss fight. Also, I don't know if you can tell right here, but yeah, so he's not aggroing anymore. It faded back. It's going to be a much better fade eventually when we fix the audio driver shit. It's actually going to be a morph into instead of a fade out fade in. Yeah. But like, also the uh, camera is dynamically zooming in and out, based trying to keep your uh, all the enemies on screen within like a certain uh, a certain margin, kind of like. Uh, I've got this guy on a really short leash. It's hard to tell right now because. He doesn't aggro very far, yeah, yeah but it's kind of like uh, Smash Brothers, you know, the camera zooms out to like fit everyone on screen. All the combatants would be on screen, as long as they're still aggressive, I mean, I just made it really short so I could show that. Right, so yeah, you won't have like people trying to beat your ass like a mile away and you won't be able to see them. Hopefully not. Damn, damn. Jesus, I need some work. While we're at it, Connor also made a game over theme. Let me play it for you. It is... Absolutely dark and brutal. This is what it's gonna sound like when you get your ass beat on ES. 
Reminds me of some like Sega 32X, Knuckles Chaotix, Dark it's like S. Some old Final Fantasy, like everything you've ever loved. <laughs> You're gonna cry yourself to sleep when you die in ES. You put like a hardcore mode in, like if you die, it's just literally game over. You're ready to sleep. Jesus. Yeah, that's it. That's Connor's inner brood showing there. Okay, guys, uh, this time I bring you concept art, so let's talk mob design. Uh, in concept art, it's all about visual library. I spent a rather large amount of my day by just looking at stuff, looking at other people's designs, paintings, things from our history and so on. Uh, so when I draw, I don't really need to, you know, focus on precisely what I want to draw. I just do it and I take from library of visual patterns that I have in my, in my mind. It's often hard to start from black, black canvas. You try to think all those intricate ideas, you know, nothing precise comes up and you end up wasting time. The, the solution to it is to just keep it simple. You start with blobs, silhouettes, and add details later. Um, it makes for a much faster process where I can make one design over 15 minutes and then just go on with my life uh, instead of, you know, spending like hours and hours. As I can, as, and as you can see, the making of is already done. So it's really fast. The whole piece took me like 45 minutes. My, uh, my only direction when I started making this is that they were golems. Mining golems most likely because it was a town that was concerned with like, uh, I mean, the ruins that we are in used to be a town that was concerned with like um, research on crystals, excavating them and, you know, dealing with all kinds of various magical properties of various crystals, minerals and so on. So first thing that I did was this this little round bot that um, I mean golem let's call them golems um, and he he's like a ore transporter so he's supposed to like transport ore. Um, then obviously we had to have like a mining bot so the one with giant spike uh, he just like smashes uh, rocks and excavate like takes like gets the crystals out of the earth, I suppose. Uh, at, this, at that point, I kind of ran off the ideas, so I took the easy route and then I just started making guns. Because, hey, guns, guns are always cool, guns are fun, and guns are really cool in games. So there's like a big dude with a gun, and there's a smaller dude with a gun. So, you know, as you can see, making a concept that it's not actually all that hard, and there is nothing arcane or magical about it. It's just, you know, artists making blobs of paint left and right. That's how you make concept art. She's supposed to be at work right now. Yes, well, no, in half an hour. All right, let's fuck over here. So, shit is a little fundamental. I'm building, like, kind of like an obstacle course to really, like, flex the, uh, the 3D mechanics, like, jumping and stuff, but, like... There's so much complexity going on because now you have to check for collision above and below you, basically in 3D. But yeah. ain't nobody got the fucking clock cycles to actually do 3D collision checks. So I've worked out a mechanism to basically half-ass the third dimension by extending, by doing multiple passes of two-dimensional checks for every every layer we support. Mm. So if an entity is is three layers of elevation high, it's using his same collision primitive, which would be like, fucking let me enable the collision primitive, which would be this. So this is cube represents his collision primitive. So basically in 2D it's just like a square, and then we're checking like for every layer of elevation we support, we're doing a 2D square check here, here, here. So it'd be like three. So basically what I've built here is a hell house. To like just <laughs> basically platforming, so I'm totally gonna cheat. Platforming because in my yes, I'm totally gonna cheat because like ain't nobody like that precise at jumping yet. But like, and I've got to make sure that like these barrels and shit. Like it's not only me that has to abide by like the third dimension collision check. Like all these assholes see yeah. have to be 3D as well, which they are now, which is good. So. Double jump. A quadruple. It's double jump. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. It's cheating, but it's fine. It's like we're platforming Watson. Yeah. Was that a chest? Yeah. Yeah. 
Made it all the way to the top of this bitch. That's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Oh shit. Now walk in the sun. You got a star, we ran out of treasure sprites. Blame the artist. <laughs> yeah. I also I also reached at something. Did else. you jump all the way back down? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you can see. Uh oh, there's this like audacious motherfucker. I just got <laughs> stuck. Uh oh, what did I just do? God, what camera am I in? <laughs> So many games. I don't know, but like this audacious motherfucker here. You talk to him? Yeah, I was trying to make it to where uh, you can fucking. I was trying to make like an interrupt system to where you can talk to them and like they'll stop what they're doing and <laughs> keep doing it, but like it's completely screwed up. <laughs> so he's like, the fuck you looking at? He's supposed to stop and like make <laughs> eye contact, but instead he just keeps going and tries to make eye contact. <laughs> kind of reached him. What you looking at just like moonwalks around you? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm gonna bash him with a barrel or something, but yeah. Actually he's he's a little smart, like he he likes to walk in this little circle. See you can knock him off course and he gets pissed and he keeps doing it. Well, Unless you get him stuck of. on a solid. Unless you get him stuck. But yeah, I was trying to do an interrupt system, but 3D stuff seems okay. It's gonna be really demanding though on some of these things, so I'm not it remains to be seen how uh, uh, we'll uh, have to make sure we field test it plenty. So one of the things I've been trying to do too is get like this lighting just right. Right. We haven't really had a whole lot of time to play with it. You've made some changes as well, but I did. Pretty damn good. Like, especially with these barrels. I did. And actually, it's it's quite optimized. If you. Oh, oh look at this. Uh, Damn, dude, that's cool as shit, man. It, I like it, it. It lags just a little bit um, because of uh, the view angle on the fireball for some reason. You can see where like the well, I I'm also there. not I'm lazy as shit. I'm not culling when you're in a perspective projection right now because I'm too lazy to figure out the fucking the trigonometry to call it correctly. Well, that would be exactly... It handles perfectly fine like normal. So, projects. yeah, I know, because you're rendering like a quarter of the map normally and like you're rendering everything off screen like that. Mm -hmm. I should totally get off my lazy ass and call it, but... There are, uh, there are baddies in here lurking in the forest waiting for you. Oh, there's, there's one? Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> They're loaded right now. <laughs> fucking blew him to hell with that fireball. Took off. I had that one of the implosion forces on it too, but I kept grabbing all the barrels. So <laughs> that was a little silly. Oh. Yeah. Jesus. I have a, a fireball doing one hit damage right now because I'm just playing around with it, and, like sniping him from afar. Right. Here comes one. Why does he get around that tree? Come on. You see me hit that grass? Jesus, yeah, I did see that. That's cool. Yeah, all the grass is interactable with it, too. You can kinda... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that. Dude, we really gotta fix the fucking elevation in this goddamn level. I know. We've been showing it so much, but, like, it really needs some 10 11. Yeah, that's the infinitely dense barrel. <laughs> I yeah. shot it a couple times. You don't want to do that. Um, it's infinitely massive. Oh, yes. Yeah. Jesus, this is the slow mo. Yeah. Damn. The white particles off a little bit, but like. So, in the back, is that particles? Oh, yeah, that's particles as fuck. Dude, damn. You can interact with it. But it's not a shadow caster, though, is it? Uh, no, it is when it's in your hand, though. It's gonna let people use it as like a flashlight and stuff, but. Um... Just totally make it cast shadows. Yeah, we could. Uh, Dude, those that looks cast, so right? goddamn good. Uh, I don't know, actually, they might. Hey guys, thanks for getting to the end of this video. We really hope that you enjoy it. We've been trying to focus on story and gameplay mechanics this time around, rather than the usual engine tech demo stuff. Although I'm sure we'll have a lot of that moving forward. You might be asking, who is this crazy British guy on my screen? I'm Daniel, I'm one of the new faces of the Elysian Shadows team. I was brought on board to design and develop uh, the website at elysianshadows.com which you can see on the screen just there. This received a lot of love since it launched about a month ago, so I really do appreciate all the kind words. Uh, lately, I've jumped uh, ship uh, with Falco to PR, trying to expand our online presence through social media and also uh, the indie dev community. Uh, we've been greatly successful doing that, and I don't know if you've noticed, but our subscriber count 
has exploded. We are now over 9,000. I'm not going to go there, but let's just say it's over 9,000. Um, I will also be doing some level design with Patrick and the art team, kind of creating the first larger area outside of Lauren that the player gets to explore. You can see it on the screen behind me, the forest. Um, it's around about 800 by 400. Uh, the forest in general split into two zones, east and west, at 400 by 400 each. It really is massive, and we do not, we're not lying when we say that they really are large levels. Um, I really think you'll probably end up getting lost in the forest. Hopefully not, but you probably will. Um, and basically, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'll be working on. That's what I have been working on. It's a quick update from me. And on behalf of the whole team, we really appreciate all the support that we've had. We've been on three podcasts this week. One of them is released. Two should be released earlier this week. Uh, that's Core Elements, 2 Dash Stash, and The Week and Geek. Um, if you go on our website, uh, there's an update for each one as it comes out, so you, you can uh, catch up there. Uh, if you don't already, we really would recommend that you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, join our circles on Google+, and more importantly, subscribe to this channel. Uh, we put out a lot of images and updates in general about what we're working on in between these videos because we know that we can't really get together as often as we like to create these videos. Uh, so I really would recommend that you do that. Uh, in the meantime, I'd just like to say, yeah, thank you for all the support. It's a quick update from me and the team, uh, an introduction for myself. I will leave you with some music by Connor, our sound guy, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.